so I forgot to bring a microphone, but I have put the I put my headset on my ear like this. So hopefully that will help to not make the the microphone punch against my jacket. But we'll see if that works out, and I'll remember to bring a microphone next time. Anyway, so I want to talk about design patterns, design principles, and I guess just software design versus the usage of frameworks or uh, libraries. The point, in short, essentially being this. I think we're too quick to... By the way, check out this bike. Awesome bike. So I think we're too quick to reach for frameworks and uh, libraries when in fact we should design that ourselves. What do I mean? Think of it this way. I think it was Robert Martin, also known as Uncle Bob, right? I think it was him, I'm not sure, but he said something along these lines. Good design is to maximize the number of decisions not made. I think there's something very fundamentally smart about that point, right? There's, there's a lot to that comment. Essentially what it means is that whenever you are uh, choosing some, for example, framework over another, or essentially whenever you're choosing a framework, what you're doing is you're coupling to that framework, right? You choose a framework and then you design some piece of your software to adhere to the specification of the API of that particular framework. The problem is not that the framework could have, hypothetically, a bad design, a poorly designed API. The, the, the problem is that you, per definition, uh, couple to, to the design of the framework. If you think about it, it's actually quite surprising that we're doing these kinds of things. I mean, programming 101 is coupling is bad, cohesion is good, right? That's like, that's like the fundamentals. And why? I mean, think of it this way. If you think about economics, there's the concept of opportunity cost, right? Like, things don't just have a cost. The cost of something is also the cost of uh, not choosing something else, right? The lost opportunity, uh, which is why it's called opportunity cost, right? The same thing applies to software, right? It's the cost of not being able to choose the other thing without incurring uh, more cost in terms of time, right? You can, you can change your mind, you can choose the other framework later on, but then you're going to have to pay in terms of time, right? You're going to have to redevelop your application to adhere to that specification of that particular software. Right? And then, like, a spontaneous reaction to this might be, yeah, but okay, adapter pattern and uh, facade pattern and uh, proxies and things like this, right? Like, we have middleware software that, that helps us not couple tightly to the framework we, we've chosen because we couple to our adapters and then rewrite our adapters if we, ch if we change the framework. And to some extent, I completely agree with this. Now that's, that's perfectly fine. And this is, I agree, the way we should do it. This is the way we should use frameworks. Right? We should have adapters in between. This is, I mean, let's be more general. This is the way we should interact with any external uh, piece of software inter in our own software, right? So whenever we are breaking the boundaries of our system, that, that particular breakage of the boundary should be well defined so that it's... The word I was looking for here is isolation. So I, I should have said that it's well isolated. Uh, dense in one place and not spread out, spread out all over the application. Point being that we're trying to avoid uh, things such as shotgun surgery, right? Meaning that if you spread out the coupling and then you change the things you are, you've coupled to, then you have to perform shotgun surgery, right? Not the thing we want to do. So I'm, I'm getting slightly sidetracked here. Let's, let's get back to the point. The point is this. Choosing a, a framework, by definition, means that you couple to that framework, right? Now, you can, you can choose to couple more or less. Again, uh, adapter patterns, etc. But by definition, you couple. Okay. 
and we know that coupling is not a good strategy. High coupling is not a good strategy for good software. So let's be more specific. Uh, I'm currently in a project where we recently had the discussion, or we recently had a discussion about tree structures, uh, the, da the data structure a tree, right? So in this particular project, we had a discussion around whether we should use uh, some library or framework or, oops, I mean, those are probably two big uh, words that are too big for this particular scenario, but we were discussing whether we should use reuse somebody else's code for managing the tree structures. Essentially, my view on this is like so, that a tree structure is not necessarily a particularly uh, complex data structure, right? We as programmers should be able to, to manage uh, a tree structure, right? And if you disagree about that, if you think that there are details that are complex enough to motivate the fact that you instead of writing instead of rolling your own tree structure you should use somebody else's tree structure then we're sort of getting to the heart of the point that I want to convey let me make another analogy Sandy Metz makes the great point in a, in a totally different area she makes the point that there's like some of these things that are almost hardwired into us as programmers very early on when we learn programming and what she, what she talks about is essentially the idea of don't repeat yourself. I think she makes a very good argument. The point is that the concept of not repeating yourself is so simple that we can take it to heart. Right? The problem with that is like the same as with all rules in programming, that it's not always true. The point of don't repeat yourself is that we should not repeat things Okay, now, now I'm being oversim oversimplistic, but as far as I see it, it, it's about not repeating things that have a reason to change in the same way as database anomalies, right? You should not duplicate a user's name over multiple rows because the user's name might change. And if you then intend to change it in all places, but forget to change it in one, then you have a serious anomaly. I think the heart of don't repeat yourself is the same problem, right? You want to avoid anomalies. It's not that we're intrinsically lazy. So I would like to suggest that another one of these things that we, as programmers, very early on, bring very close to heart and keep <laughs> and safe keep in our hearts, right? Is the notion of not reinventing the wheel, right? And my point here is that it's sometimes good to reinvent the wheel because this is also a rule that's not always true, okay? And again, this is one of these very easy things that it's, it's so easy and it sort of intuitively makes sense, so we take it very close to heart, keep it very close to heart. The notion of not reinventing the wheel, right? right? In, in terms of tree structures, the data structure, then it makes perfect sense, right? The concept of a tree is well known and well defined and people have built these before so we should just use them right or I mean that that logically sort of makes sense and I think sort of that's how we think sometimes when we motivate the fact that we should reuse somebody else's code that we should reuse a framework right like why would I want to do routing somebody else there there's intrinsic details about writing, routing that are difficult and somebody else have found these, isolated these issues and sort of solved the problems. <clears throat> so why should I, I solve them? Why should I reinvent the wheel? Right? So I'm not saying we should reinvent the wheel all the time. Again, what I'm saying is that sometimes we should value decoupling over not reinventing the wheel. Right? So we should choose to write our own code with the purpose of decoupling, with the purpose of not coupling to somebody else's code, right? We should, we should consider that more important right? then, than gaining the luxury of not reinventing the wheel, of, of not re-implementing code that somebody else has already built, right? 
But there's always this valuation, right? You always have to look at your particular scenario and consider whether it's one way or the other. There's so much ice here, right? Check this out. Again, all, I, all I'm saying is I want to nuance the discussion a bit. I, I want to say that just because somebody else has written something which is very similar to, to your problem does not mean that you should grab that and put that in your source code, right? There's a very high risk that that will be, that that, that, that will increase the coupling of your source code, which is which runs the risk of making it difficult for you to change in the future. So let me make one final point before I wrap up. In the same project as I discussed before, so we're currently in the process of rewriting the sort of data layer for that project. And we've been in discussions back and forth and back and forth about whether we should use a framework or a library or not, right? To reuse some existing code. And honestly, of course, I've been a proponent of, of using frameworks many times in these discussions, right? Because, again, why reinvent the wheel if somebody has already successfully figured out uh, the tricky details for you? However, we're, we're very close to, to finishing this custom data layer up. Right? because we, we, in the end, decided to roll our own. And having figured out the intrinsic, the sort of difficult details about this, uh, about this particular kind of data layer, I've, I've, of course, been thinking back and forth about how to, uh, how to open source this. Here's my take on it. I think that perhaps this is the kind of thing that should not be open sourced, because the problems that we're solving cannot be put into a framework. The problems that were, or I mean, they can be put in a framework, but I would argue that they shouldn't be put in a framework. The kind of problems that we're solving are essentially design issues where the design should be communicated rather than shipping, than that the framework should be shipped. So what do I mean by this? I mean that what we're figuring out with this particular uh, with this custom data layer is a way of sort of slicing the pie such that change requests are easier to handle. Or let me put it in other words. It's a way of dividing up the pieces of a data layer such that that, that allows you some particular kind of flexibility. Right? That it makes you ready for some kinds of changes. Right? So, so in that sense, it's a convention. Or in other words, it's a design. It's a pattern. Right? It's not a principle, really, but, but, but perhaps it's a pattern. Right? It's a pattern of what particular pieces of your application should be performing what, and how they should be connected and inter interrelated, how they should be coupled. Right? Or, I mean, our modest suggestion as to how they should be coupled. Because if you think about it, I mean, if you think about the old uh, gang of four patterns, right? The iterator pattern and visitor pattern and factory pattern, etc., 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 strategy, whatever, whatever. These are not frameworks, right? Because they're not suitable as frameworks, right? They are, they, they are a way of structuring your code, right? And if you think about that, you can think about you can think about it this, uh, in this way, like, in some sort of vague sense, they're data structures, right? Where you design your classes in a certain way, much like a tree structure, a tree data structure is also about constructing a bunch of classes, right? C conforming to some hypothetical API, right? So yeah, let's, let's cut off here. I think the takeaway from this is I think we should reconsider well that's that's too extreme let's say so I think we should be a little bit more careful or considering or strategic when before 
we pick frameworks or the next time we want we feel the need to reuse somebody else's code when in fact it would be potentially feasible to write it ourselves again with the argument that the cost of rewriting that particular piece of software yourself is lower than the cost or rather should I say the risk or, or the the hypothetical cost that we could incur right? potentially this is technical debt or closely related to technical debt the, the hypothetical cost that we could incur by coupling to a particular framework So, I'm Chris. I'd be delighted to hear what you think. Uh, if you disagree, if you agree, if you would like to add, if you would like to put terms on the thing to the, the to the things that I'm saying. So, thanks for having this chat with me, and uh, I'll see you next time.